If you're just jumping in here, I've got a playlist about this pond if you want to get caught up. Or if you're new to the channel, basically everything in this cabin is a video. So if you're interested in, say, the door or the fireplace or anything like that, I have a video about it. So take a look. Uh, okay, let's get started on the project. Well, once again, I arrived to find the pond partially filled with water. I decided to leave it in there because it was a good point of reference when stacking the rocks. So what I'm doing here is known as rocking in. So I'm placing the rocks and I'm backfilling with gravel. You have to do this because you need to hold down your liner or in my situation, it's a sediment isolation layer. Uh, my liner is not really required for waterproofing because this pond is built in pure clay. But if you were building in a different soil type, you'd need to be much more careful about puncturing the liner. I wasn't sure how level I had built my courses on the previous days, but when I got here to see the water, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that I'd done a decent job. You can see how dirty these rocks are in the 57s that I'm using to backfill when I drop this rock in. I use this opportunity to pump out the pond to also spray down these rocks and hopefully get a bunch of the sediment out. I have a feeling it's going to take a couple more chimes to really get them clean. I've mentioned that I got the liner and the felt and some of the filter parts from my friend Barrett who runs Outdoor Living Group, the lumber supply. Uh, him and his father also build water features and they've been kind of advising and helping me through this project. The biggest thing that they stressed to me was do not build it too big. Um, they said it's really hard to keep the water clear and being off grid, I don't have the luxury of just using as much power as I want to run bigger and bigger pumps. I have to keep this thing small, otherwise I'll never be able to filter it. I sprayed down these rocks and then used my shovel to kick up a bunch of sediment so that the pump would pump out as much of it as possible. A couple more rainstorms like this and I might have this place looking pretty clean. Well, this is about the end of day one. I'm always disappointed in the amount of work I actually get done, but I decided to let this pump run while I had some dinner, played with Beatrice a bit, and got ready for the next day. So by this point of the project, I've really picked through and got all the best rocks out, so my supply is running low. It's getting tougher and tougher to find nice rocks to fit where I want them to fit. You can see I'm putting in a lot of triangular shaped ones or ones that are just like really large or really small. I'm tempted to buy another load, but I really don't want to spend any more money. Here's another rock I accidentally dropped in when I was working. This one was kind of tough to get out. All right, I just got this thing pumped out. Final time, hopefully. I better get this gravel bed filtered down in here so I don't have to keep pumping this thing out. So we're gonna get started on that. You like the pond without water, don't you? She's deathly afraid of, of deep... Don't drink that, that's gross. Ew. She's deathly afraid of deep water. 
she won't swim or anything. It's so funny. Lab golden mix that won't swim. Hey. Stop eating rocks. Stop eating rocks. Oh, dude, I won't. Okay, so what I'm starting to build here is one of two types of the filtration systems that will help to keep this pond clean. This is going to be part of the gravel bed filter. And the way that this works is that it draws oxygenated water down through a bed of gravel by use of a bubble pump. And what this does is, con contrary to popular belief, it's not about clearing sediment. It's not about trying to get stuff stuck in the gravel. It's actually pulling water through the gravel, which provides a surface layer for what's called biofilm. And I'm going to oversimplify this, but this biofilm is basically home to a bunch of microorganisms that eat the nutrients out of the water. Well, I can't get this open, so I guess I'm using a can opener. I guess it's a one-use can. That's annoying. Oh, don't tell me. Normally I have uh, vice grips with me. Anyway, the strategy with these gravel filters is to keep the nutrient content in your water so low that things like string algae have trouble surviving. Uh, these gravel bed filters work in tandem with a skimmer pump. The skimmer pump is important because it keeps the biological material from building up inside the gravel bed, which can cause a die off of your microfilm. They require occasional back flushing because too much organic material built up in the bed prevents them from working properly. These are kind of tricky because these pumps need to run 24-7 or else you will have a mass die-off of the beneficial bacteria that's actually helping you keep your water clean. If anyone's curious, the book that I'm using as a source, a very rough source, is Building Natural Swimming Ponds by Wolfram Kircher and Andreas Tone. I honestly don't recommend it. I find it to be overly and unnecessarily technical. I think you'd be better off with a different source. Now I'm just using my circular saw to cut slits in this PVC so that when I attach the bubble pump or the airlift pump, it can draw the oxygenated water through the gravel bed filter and through this PVC and then up and out a column that will attach later on. Alright, so maybe we cut this off a little bit lower, but the air pump goes down there. The air uh, displaces water as the air rises. Water rushes in to, to fill the displaced water and it pulls it through those slits I cut through the bed.
All right, so let's take a look at what we got done today. Continued this up uh, two more courses. Um, so I am going to continue over here. Um, and then we got the steps. A um, couple more steps up. I don't know if I like the way that one in the middle there works. I might rebuild this later. And then I started lining the perimeter here. And then I ran out of the protective felt. Um, and that one kind of got away from me. That one's kind of heavy and hard to move. I might, I'll might i probably move that. And then I got this course up to the um, planting slash uh, gravel bed section. Uh, there's going to be... This gap here is for a bubble pump to go through. And then I'll probably... This looks kind of weird now, but... Um, it'll look better once it's filled in with like decorative stones So this whole side over here will be Water be like maybe six inches deep and it'll be all for plantings and um, Well once the rocks are in six inches deep uh, Probably probably be a foot foot and a half deep as it stands um, And then the skimmer pump will go here and I'll I'm going to continue building the rocks up here to that grade i mean that's that's about the finished grade and um i can't i continue to get a bunch of comments about like building it small or too small but people got to remember that i'm off grid and every like every bit bigger that you make it is more power for filtering which is more money because it means that you're um, solar's got to be bigger and your batteries have to be bigger and it's just a slippery slope um, but these pumps have to run 24 7 if you want to be able to swim in it uh, if you don't want to swim in it then you know they don't have to run 24 7 it can just be any other pond but if you want it really clear they got to run 24 7 all right well thanks for watching and uh, catch up with you guys in another one